I felt the pressure of trying to make a TV show work. That's it. <laughs> and of, yes, in trying to produce a TV show. <laughs> That's I a already lot. had plenty <laughs> of pressure and hosting that show at night. And I had to, because I decided to do the show kind of differently than the way John imagined it. Yeah. I'm weighing in. You have to write that, you know, so that you, you have to write an editorial every night, okay? Um, that's what that first part of the show is. It's an editorial. Nobody's done it better than John Stewart. He was brilliant at that. You know, that's he set the high mark for that. Oliver does a really good job, but his his is more of an investigation more than an editorial. You know, you know. So, but all of us are are imitations of what John has done. Mm. <laughs> that type of thing, right? But I had to do my version of that. I'm just talking about what the form is. You know, that takes a lot of of work during the day. But I was also producing a panel discussion right. with four guests. What are the challenges? That I had to know yeah. who those guests were. Yeah. And the way we were producing it was exhaustive. Where they would present me like, we had like five pages of questions and stuff that I had to pour through. I'm like, guys, I can't do this. My head was going to explode. I, we did that like that for three months, and I thought I was going to die. And I realized that I had to change that panel part of it. And trying to produce a comic portion at the end, which was John's idea. That was the third part of it. It's yeah. like, how the fuck are we supposed to do that? And keeping it at 100, I knew had short legs. We can't do that every night. You know, it's only mm. interesting once in a while. And you have to have interesting people who there's something at stake if they don't answer it. It can't just be anybody's answering that. You know, so Cory Booker did the first one, and he was great because he's a senator. You know, and it is it is important the way he answers a question. You know. But it was just a brother named Cory Booker. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Nobody cares what he thinks, right. really. That's just how TV works, you know. So, um, so it was exhaustive. So after a while, we simplified the show where um, I I stopped over preparing for that panel and instead prepared for a conversation. Mm. And so I threw panel out of my head and put conversation in my head. And we're like, this is going to be a conversation. And by the way, it's what the show always was intended to be, was a conversation about difficult topics, too. Um, so I made that more of a conversation and became much more freer to do. And by the time the show went off the air, I think I felt the most comfortable in that realm. Mm. You know, And it just didn't exhaust me as much as trying to prepare for a typical panel type show, which is what we were trying to produce, which is impossible. Right, just balancing. It's all just impossible. Things. Like I don't care. I don't need to know what somebody's going to say. I don't want to set up somebody for a pat answer. I'd rather have a dynamic, surprising conversation where I'm surprised by what they're saying, or I'm pushing them in a certain area, or they're pushing back at me mm. because we don't know what's coming up. It's much more interesting, and it uses my skill set at its best. John was great, by the way, John Stewart, while we were doing this, because sometimes. <sighs> He'd be very direct in feeling that it wasn't good enough, you know? And you're like devastated going, fuck, John doesn't think this is good enough. He gave you feedback on it. Oh, he was, com yeah. completely. You know? He was active as a producer on that show. Well, yeah. active in the sense that when we would have meetings with us, he'd be very direct about how he felt about what he was watching, you know? And early on, there were certain times where he just wasn't feeling it. Like in the first few months, he thought I was doing a good job in the first part of the show, but he just thought I was not finding it in that second part. Keep in mind, I was overproducing that. I was it was not spontaneous. I was kind of being a host. And he felt I was being a host of that and needed to stop doing that. And needed to put myself out more. And the audience needed to know where I stood on that. We didn't he didn't give a shit what those other people said, you know. And he really pushed me more to do that, you know. The second push came directly from John, was more about content and point of view on that content. And where he said, here's, here's what I think the show should be about. He said, you can disagree with me if you want. I'm like, we're not going to disagree with you. <laughs> you know? But he said, uh, I believe that you could take any problem in America right now. These are John Stewart. John Stewart's words. He says, I believe you can take any problem in America right now. You can look underneath it. You're going to find race, class, or gender. He says, I don't care what the problem is. He says, you're going to find that. He says, I think that's what your show needs to be. And we're like, okay. As a producer, I'm thinking, I see that. You know, mm -hmm. I think we weren't specific enough about the things we wanted to cover. We were just 
covering anything that seemed like it needed to be covered. But John helped clarify what he felt our show should focus on from that point of view. And for me, I expressed it early on where I wanted our show to take on the underdog, whoever the underdog was in the story we wanted to take it. But John helped clarify the nature of the type of storytelling he felt our show should be an advocate for, was finding that stuff. And so it was a combination of all those things that finally gave the show the life to really start growing, you know. Mm -hmm. So that was a very interesting process of how yeah. things work.